นมัตถุรัตนติยสัตเมตไหมโคเบจุตชุปันเจนตบูดาดดามันสังคัตแฮปปี้เวสัตถูโอ้เพื่อนส์ผู้อาบุดิสแอนุสุนนอนบุดิสอนเดอร์สิกอัปเมย์2020 The Buddhists all over the world we celebrate Vesak. So today, I would like to share some aspect about Vesak with all of you. And when we talk about the celebration of Vesak, we normally look at the event. When the Buddha was born, when he achieved an enlightenment, and also when he passed away. However, apart from these three major events about the Buddha's life, we may choose to look at some aspect, especially the events after his enlightenment. According to Theravada tradition, we believe that the Buddha was born, achieved his enlightenment, and passed away on the full moon day of the sixth lunar month, approximately on the day he was born in 623 BC, achieved an enlightenment in 888. Sorry. In 588 BC, and then he passed away. In 543 BC, I would like to talk about the event after his enlightenment. According to the Theravada tradition, we believe that the Buddha spent seven weeks or 49 days. At the Bodhi tree and in the fishing tree. There was one event that is very interesting for many scholars. That was to say, at a certain point, the Buddha even thought not to give a sermon because having considered. What he discovered was very profound, very deep. It it would be a bit difficult for many people to be able to penetrate the truth. And then there was the appearance of Brahma God by the name of Sahambati. Sahambati. Was a Brahma God. The somebody Brahma God invited the Buddha to give a sermon in order to help the sentient beings. If we look at this fact, we can say that Brahma God came to invite the Buddha, and why Brahma God? From my personal point of view, in those days, people strongly believe in the Brahma God. They believe that Brahma God was the Creator. Then, when the Buddha said, "Even the Brahma God came to invite me to give a sermon," so which means that Brahma God is not actually special. This could be a kind of a political drive, but it works. So this is the, the first event that I would like to talk about. Um, this may be contradictory to uh, some other religion, but for Buddhists, we accept that Brahma God. Is still the cycle of birth and death. Brahma God doesn't have 
eternal life. Although the lifespan is very long, but at the end, the Brahma God will die. And the second aspect that I want to talk about is the Buddha strategy. When he went to save the group of five monks of Panchawaki, and why he chose to go to give the first sermon to the group of five monks. From my personal understanding, those five monks already have some background, which means that they were right to penetrate the truth. Although at first they denied to listen to the Buddha, but, but after the Buddha repeat telling them that he had never told them before, that he achieved enlightenment and then they sat down and listened to the Buddha. In his first sermon, the Buddha first said, avoid two extremes, self-modification and self-indulgence. I thought the reason why he suggested to avoid these two extremes because he would like to give their understanding about how to end suffering. Self-modification will only bring about suffering. Self-indulgence is not certain until you try to please yourself but your desire will never be fulfilled because of the sensual pleasure. And then the third strategy that I want to talk about is how the Buddha spread his teaching. After giving the first sermon to the group of five monks and then on his way, he met 30 boys who were looking for the girl. And then he went on to see the three brothers. After giving a sermon to the three brothers who were ascetic and they were highly respected by the people, even by the king. When we look at this event, we can say that the Buddha was very clever and he used the good strategy in order to spark his teaching. When the three brothers, Urukwela Gasapa, Kaya Gasapa, and Nati Gasapa, became the Buddha followers, then it was easier for ordinary people to follow his teaching. And even King Pimbisara, having heard that now Prince Siddhartha had achieved an enlightenment, the king too was eager to listen to the Buddha sermon. So this could be regarded as another strategy. When the king became a Buddhist, then it would be easier for all the many people to follow the Buddha's teaching. So on this special occasion, I just would like to send my best wishes to all Buddhists, even non-Buddhists. This year, we have to celebrate Vesak online. To celebrate Vesak, we can simply stay at home, do something good, chanting, meditation, or listen to the talk. At the end of my message, I would like to make a wish that may happiness, may well-being, may success, may prosperity, 
be the honor of you.